Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic, broadcasting for listeners in Europe. Cordial welcome to our program. As all the regular listeners would surely know, the GDR turned 40 at the weekend. Now that the celebrations are over, we'll be looking back at our national day. Included in our 45 minute broadcast will be an interview with one of the prominent guests who attended the Jubilee here in Berlin, Gus Hall, chairman of the Communist Party of the United States. Later on in the program, Bob Hamilton will be reviewing the World Cup qualifying match between the GDR and the Soviet Union, and the Xers will be able to pick up some advice from our DX expert Wolfram Hess towards the end of our transmission. First of all, this is Eva Martin handing over to our news team. And first, the headlines. GDR and Chinese leaders have paid tribute to the dynamic development of relations between their two countries. Eric Honecker has reaffirmed the GDR's firm solidarity with the Palestinian people. And at the Hiroshima Congress of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, the GDR representative has warned of the danger emanating from the modernization of short-range missiles in Central Europe. Now, the news in detail. GDR leader Eric Honecker had talks in Berlin today with the head of the Chinese party and government delegation to the GDR's anniversary celebrations, Yao Yilin. Both later leaders paid tribute to the dynamic development of bilateral relations in all fields. They stated full unanimity of views on the most essential vital questions of mankind, as well as common aims in the further development of socialism. Eric Honecker briefed his guest on the results of the GDR's 40 years of development. At all times, it had taken on the challenges of the times. The concept of the unity of economic and social policy as decided upon at the 8th Congress of the Socialist Unity Party in 1971 had fully stood its test. The 12th Party Congress, which has been convened for May 1990, will be prepared by a thorough popular discussion on socialism in the 90s. The past four decades had made clear that only socialism is in the position to solve basic social contradictions in the interests of the nations. He rejected any attempts by imperialism to destabilize socialist construction and to slander its successes and achievements. The Chinese West stressed that the GDR and correspondence with its concrete conditions had ever more perfected its economy in a continuous process of reforms and renewals, and thus had made life for its citizens ever more worth living. The existence of a socialist GDR and its further development were of decisive significance for peace and stability in the heart of Europe. Its policy of peace and dialogue stretched far beyond the borders of Europe. 
The two sides agree that currently a particularly aggressive anti-socialist attitude is being pursued by the imperialist class enemy. A basic lesson from the counter-revolutionary uprising in Peking and the current slander campaign against the GDR and other socialist countries was to stick unwaveringly to the basic values of socialism. The GDR party and state leader Eric Honecker has received the leader of the Yemeni Socialist Party, Ali Salam al bid in Berlin today. During their talk, Eric Honecker reaffirmed the GDR's solidarity with the Palestinian people's human struggle for the implementation of their right to self-determination and the setting up of an independent state. Ali Salam al bid spoke about the close relationships between his party and the people of the People's Democratic Republic of Yemen and the GDR. The two politicians spoke highly of the relations between their parties and states marked by mutual confidence and understanding and agreed to develop these contacts. The Ninth World Congress of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War continues in Hiroshima today in more than 30 sections and working groups. The Congress has been attended by 3,000 physicians from 70 countries, including the GDR. The deputy chairman of the GDR section, Professor Hans Rudi, speaking at a colloquium, spoke of the dangers emanating from the modernization of short-range nuclear missiles and Central Europe. Dr. Heino Niemann spoke about the paths toward a comprehensive ban on all nuclear testing. More more doctors are represented at the Congress as lectures and discussion leaders. This news comes to you on Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. The delegates to the party congress of the Hungarian Socialist Party have adopted the party's political platform in Budapest today. In the economic field, the document orientates on a mixed economy. The foreign political goal of the Hungarian Socialist Party is the promotion of any political and military steps which serve the consolidation of detente in Europe. On late Sunday afternoon, the party congress, after a heated discussion, had agreed with the majority that the branches of the newly formed party should also work at a factory level. The leader of the Association of European Romanies, Rudkow Kovizinski, speaking to newsmen in Bonn, has condemned the police violence against his compatriots in Hamburg. Police forces attacked and destroyed a Romney's camp on the grounds of the former concentration camp of Neuengamme, near Hamburg, where women, children, and Jid had taken refuge for fear of their planned deportation from the Federal Republic of Germany. Mr. Kovacinski described the planned deportation of 1,500 Romanies who had been living in the Federal Republic of Germany for decades as a cynical and infamous policy of selection, which was the continuation of old traditions of gypsy expulsion. The 32nd General Assembly Session of the World Federation of United Nations Associations has opened in Moscow today. Discussion will center on global security issues and the related tasks of the United Nations. The delegates represent national UN associations, international organizations and federations, UN specialized agencies, and research institutions. The presidents of Romania and the state of Palestine, Nikolai Ceausescu and Yasser Arafat, meeting in Bucharest, have called for the early convening of a Middle East conference under UN patronage. They said the conference should discuss ways to implement the Palestinian people's right to self-determination and to ensure the security of all states and durable peace in the Middle East. They rejected all imperialist attempts at interfering in other people's internal affairs, slandering socialism, and destabilizing the situation in socialist and other countries. 
The Cambodian Defense Minister, Tia Bin, speaking to newsmen in Phnom Penh, has said that armed units of the Khmer opposition are attempting to invade Cambodia from Thailand and to cut major road links. He said the situation around the besieged cities of Pai Lin and Siro Sufan were especially serious. Cambodian army units supported by self-defense forces had beaten off the attacks, he said. Fifty people were killed in terrorist attacks by extremist groups in Sri Lanka at the weekend. Among the victims, there are government officials and supporters of the governing United National Party. A number of local administration buildings and post offices were destroyed. President Pramadasa has asked the International Red Cross Committee in Geneva for humanitarian aid and medical care. The leading Soviet newspaper Pravda has described the United States PASEX-89 military exercise currently taking place in the Pacific as an obstacle on the path towards peace without nuclear weapons. More than 500 planes, some 100 warships, and more than 200,000 troops are involved in the exercise. Also taking part are Canadian, Philippine, Australian, Japanese, and South Korean forces. According to Pravda, there has not been such a large-scale troop concentration in the Pacific Ocean since World War II. This news comes to you on Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. The modernized and extended parish rooms of an evangelical church have been opened with a festive service in Hoyerswerda, in the region of Cottbus. The state secretary for church affairs, Kurt Lüffler, said that the building documented the creative common ground in a city whose development is closely linked with the 40 years of the GDR's history. The building was named after the U.S. civil rights campaigner and clergyman Martin Luther King. And finally, the 12th National Festival of Documentary Films and Short Films opens in the northern regional city of Neubrandenburg today. 52 films and television productions have been entered. The best of them will be shown at the Leipzig International Documentary and Short Film Festival in November. At the Leipzig Festival, the retrospective will present films by the GDR documentarist Karl Gass. And now, once more, the headlines. GDR and Chinese leaders have paid tribute to the dynamic development of relations between their two countries. Eric Honecker has reaffirmed the GDR's firm solidarity with the Palestinian people. And finally, at the Hiroshima Congress of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, the GDR representative has warned of the danger emanating from the modernization of short-range missiles in Central Europe. This is the European Service of Radio Berlin International. In today's papers, the 40th anniversary of the founding of the data takes pride of place. Jennifer Mitchell with a short press review. GDR newspapers today give wide coverage to the activities on October the 7th, when the people throughout the country observe the 40th anniversary of the founding of the socialist German state. They carry reports and photos of the festivities in all parts of the country. The ceremony in the Palace of the Republic, the torchlight procession of the Free German Youth Organization, and the military parade of the National People's Army. We have also published the speeches made by the General Secretary of the Socialist Unity Party and State Council Chairman Yves Honecker and the Soviet Party Chairman Mikhail Gorbachev at the festive ceremony in Berlin. The newspaper of the Socialist Unity Party, Neues Deutschland, in a resume. National Day writes that the people celebrated the 40th anniversary of the German Democratic Republic against the background of a successful development which led from the ruins of World War II to the modern socialist state, which played its part in the safeguarding of peace in the heart of Europe for the benefit of the people. Neues Deutschland recalls the remarks made by Edith Schoenke in this speech that the GDR today was one of the leading industrial countries of the world with a very high standard of living. It also recalls the remark of Mikhail Gorbachev that the founding of the GDR had a great influence on the post-war development in Europe and the world at large. 
organization Junge Welt has published a photo and an article under the heading Under the Wrong Flag and in the Wake of the Wrong People, in which it deals with the provocations. The article says, among other things, those who tried to disturb the festivities marking the GDR's anniversary didn't know themselves whom they actually followed. Wherever Western reporters, above all camera teams, went, a certain type of person was on the spot to instigate trouble, for instance, by linking arms and attacking our police while shouting, no violence. Until one of them was eventually able to show his bleeding nose to a Western camera. Today's newspapers show that all in all, the security forces, together with the participants in the festivities, were able to put the hooligans in their place. Neues Deutschland writes on its front page that the development of the GDR will continue to be the work of all the people. And on its second page, the paper goes on to say, and I quote, New requirements call for new solutions, and together with the people, we will find an answer to every question. We solve our problems ourselves by selfless methods. Advice intended to weaken socialism falls on deaf ears here. In future, too, there will be no mass unemployment, homelessness, and lack of material security in the GDR, because we have the fundamental interest of the people as a whole at heart, and the whole population will have to contribute their initiative, their expertise, and their proposal to the democratic discussion prior to the party congress in the interest of our common socialist cause. It remains the supreme principle that we must do everything for the well-being of the people and their peaceful future. A reminder, you are listening to Radio Berlin International, the voice of the German Democratic Republic. 